Let's move on to the next uh, transformational thinking habit. And what is what is the first one? Looking at God. And and look at the language of that, all right? It's not looking to God. Looking to God, and nothing wrong with looking to God, but it's a little bit more vague, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sort of looking to God, you know, it means I've got this kind of a, a hope and a trust. But looking at God, this means inwardly I am turning directly to Him. I am looking face to face at Him. Yeah? That's, and that's what it means to abide in Christ. That's what it means to look at Him, to abide in Him. Then you'll bear much fruit. Then you'll ask what you will and it will be done for you. Beautiful. The second transformational thinking habit is what? A passion for the highest. Who is it that we're serving? Wow. What is he capable of? There's nothing too hard for him. So, see, so out of looking at God, my goodness, comes massive vision and hope, always a sense of opportunity. There, so, so, dear friends, practically in a leader's life and thinking, that means we may have hit a brick wall, and on the left is a wall, and on the right is a wall, and on the back is a wall, the top and the bottom are all walls, and yet there are still options. So come on, Lord, what are they? Yeah? Always hoping, always trusting, always looking for the vision, not overcome whatever it is, however bad it looks. And also not just in a negative sense of seeing the way out of the struggle, but also in a positive sense. Lord, we've seen this, we're so grateful, but we're not going to rest. What's next? There's more. There's always more because we're serving God. We leaders limit themselves in their own vision. The limitation does not come from Him. And so this is an internal way of thinking for a leader. It's a habit. It's actually a discipline that you're choosing as you look at God to see the vision, to see the opportunity, to see the hope. Yeah? And of course, there are ta the, the, the Scriptures are such visionary books, aren't they? I mean, look at the Lord Jesus and the kinds of things He would say. This gospel will be proclaimed in all the earth and then the world will come. All the earth. Lord, there you are. You're in Israel, this tiny little piece of land in the Middle East. You've got a handful of scruffy disciples and you're declaring that this is going to go to all the earth. Isn't that like weird? <laughs> you talk about a passion for the highest. And, and we see this through the biblical writers, uh, through all of them, because they were in union with God. Uh, look at Paul's visionary statements. We read a bunch of them when we were in a healthy church. How about those for visionary? On the church, that the body will grow into the full, will be filled with all the fullness of God, that, that will be in Jesus' prayer, that will be in unity. Paul's uh, statements that we will grow together, grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wow! And it's not that Paul was looking at some perfect church. It, it was just as hard for him, you know, to believe that as it is for us today. He saw division, trouble, strife, false teaching, sin in the church, on and on. We just have more of it today. But it's the same stuff that he saw, yeah? But he looked beyond that because he was looking at God. And so this is the internal world of the healthy leader, a passion for the highest. And we should uh, encourage one another along these lines. Lift up your eyes off the current circumstances. Come on, let's trust God. There's nothing too hard for him. What can he do? There's a lovely little framework here on page 31. 31 and 32, let's have a quick look at this. This is a contrast between being content with the status quo and a passion for God's highest. Notice it's God's highest. So this is not just motivational thinking where we're trying to, 
you know, just get ourselves into a, some sort of a, a human frame of mind to, you know, hope for the best, you know, positive thinking or something. It's not that at all. It's a passion for God's highest. It comes from Him, it comes from His indwelling life, yeah? And most people are content with the status quo. In fact, much of their life and energy revolves around trying to maintain the status quo, yeah? Trying just to maintain bare existence. But this is not God's leader. We will never be content with the status quo, no matter how beautiful it, it may be at certain times. So here, related to effort, content with the status quo, passive. Why bother? See, if you're not seeing change, if you're not seeing the opportunity for change, if there's no vision, then you think it's all going to stay the same. So why bother? You'll just be fatalistic, yeah? But when you've got a passion, you will be active. We can do things. We can move ahead. One's desire. Status quo, your desire to look smart. Passion for God's highest. Come on, let's learn. We need to learn. We need to change. We need to grow. Not just impress others with where we're at right now. Challenges. Status quo will avoid the challenge, won't we? But when we have a passion for God's highest, we embrace the challenge. Uh, this is something that, that we've seen uh, in many of our emerging leaders in the, uh, the full-time training programs, is that through the training, this is nurtured in their life. And then when they go back into the front lines, church planting, evangelism, whatever is, you know, pastoral work, whatever it is, that then we, we hear this many times that they face challenges, but their response is they see the opportunity in the challenge. So it's not even just that they're saying we're going to overcome this, but they're saying, what's God going to do in us through this? Let's embrace the challenge. I remember a few years ago, and I'm not going to embarrass anybody here, so I'll keep this general, but far be it for me to ever embarrass anybody, especially intentionally. Um, but we, we ran into a little bit of a financial, uh, uh, just a small financial struggle as a ministry for a period of time. And I remember some on our team said, all right, we're, we're, cutting our, we're, we're cutting our salaries. It was like, I don't know, it was, a, like, it was a significant cut. It wasn't just a small cut. We want to cut our salaries. And I said, no, no, actually, we have, uh, we have funding for your particular area. It's okay, you don't have to. And their response? Their response, don't rob us of this opportunity. Whoa, I got told off. Don't rob us of this opportunity to trust God, to trust God with the whole family. Wow, that is a passion for the highest. Not just trying to maintain the status quo, yeah? But looking. And, and what are we going to learn through this? How is God going to help us to grow through this? Well, look, that is the kind of leader that will turn their nation upside down. Yeah? Obstacles, we just give up. Or we persist, we never give up. Criticism, let's just avoid it. <laughs> Status quo, I don't want it. Passion for God's highest, what can I learn from this? It's not that it's enjoyable. No one enjoys being corrected or criticized. But the attitude, the internal attitude of the healthy leader. What can I learn from this? Yeah? When I see others succeed, what does status quo do? Yeah, I'm jealous of them. I'm threatened by their success. Why is it them and not me? But when it's passion for God's highest. <coughs> wow, thank God. Look at their lives. Look at their leadership. Look at their work, how well they're doing. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for that gratefulness to God. And also, how can we follow in their footsteps? What can we learn from them? How can we do that too? You know, boy, then we're not competing anymore, are we? We give up competition. We're able to work together. The fruit, content with the status quo, how much are you going to achieve in the end, honestly? Not much. But passion for God's highest, constantly growing, constantly learning and achieving. And it's a, um, what's the word? It's a, it's a reinforcing cycle. 
Yeah? Either way, if you, if you think there's no point in doing anything because nothing will happen, so you don't do anything, so nothing happens, which then reinforces, why bother anyway? But when you move ahead trusting God, we will see His breakthrough, which then reinforces, let's move ahead next time trusting God. So either way, it becomes this, uh, what's the word? What's, what am I? A vicious cycle or a visionary cycle. That's great, Jim. Did you just create that on the spot? No, I thought about that. Oh, okay. It's got to be something different from this. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. And look at our effect on others. When it's content with the status quo, what do we do to others around, around us? Oh, man. We kill ourselves, we kill them, yeah? But when you're a visionary leader with a passion for God's highest, you energize people. This, by the way, is uh, it's another one of these critical indicators of an emerging leader, uh, of, of a high potential emerging leader. Look for those who energize others. Wow. That when they're speaking and acting, that people come alive. They're energized. Yeah, we can do this. We can... We can move ahead, we can overcome, we can explore the opportunity. Look for the energizing. Now you may well have a really powerful leader uh, on your hands. And then the, finally, the motto. The motto of the status quo, nothing will ever change. Why bother? Passion for God's highest. With God, all things are possible. So come on, give me this mountain. Amen. Here, under, underneath that, the bullets. Deep passion for the highest is willing to face reality. See, we're willing to face reality. So passion for the highest is not that we're fooling ourselves. We're willing to face the reality. Remember Abraham. Face the reality of his situation. Yeah? Impossible to have kids. It's, it's not that he was denying the reality or trying to sort of talk himself into some positive motivational state. He faced the reality and then he trusted God. That's the passion for the highest. Good. Let's think about uh, next team assignment. What are the opposites and what are the dark sides of passion for the highest, please, in your teams? Can we hear your work? Let's hear your work. Jyoti, can you come and... Um, can you come and <laughs> Passion for the highest. What's the opposite? Complacency. Complacency. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Dark side. <coughs> Apathy. 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 Apathy is, is a dark side? Apathy is a um, opposite, of course, yeah. Dark side, perfectionism. Yeah, good one. Wow. If we confuse the two, if we chase perfectionism, we're going to really, that's going to be, perfectionism is a hard taskmaster. It's going to drive ourselves, we're going to drive everyone else. And it's, it's unhealthy as a leader. You can do what? I said I could give you its business card. <laughs> You've, got, okay. You've got that one down. Huh? <laughs> opposite, another opposite. Pride. Pride. How uh, connect that? How, how is that the opposite? Let me jump over. Um, we shift from being um, uh, focused on God, from having passion to God, to our own passion. Uh -huh. passion, 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 passion wow. To achieve our goals. Okay. Our yep, our own ambition. Yes. Our own ambition, yeah, that we, take, that we take pride in. Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing. It can look the same. Self-ambition. 
It can look the same as a godly passion for the highest, but really it's our own ambition. Wow. And to be honest, there is an awful lot in the Christian church around the world that is called divine vision. In reality, it is human ambition. And this, this is the fourth C, isn't it? A healthy calling and not just me trying to do something to have everybody look with amazement at the great man of God I am. Human ambition. Opposite. Opposite. Human ambition. Yeah. Here's, uh, in case you haven't come across this before, here's a beautiful way to tell whether what you say is your vision, to tell whether it's really a divine vision, a healthy vision, or if it is human ambition. Do you want to know this way? Yes. I'm going to give you a way. It's, it might hurt. <laughs> you still want it? Yes. All right. All right. Here's the thing. You say, dear local church leader, that your vision is to win souls across your city. Yeah? That's your vision, is for large numbers of people to come to Christ. Does that sound like a good vision? Yes. Sounds like a great vision to me. Okay, but then you're watching the church down the road and there are all kinds of people coming to Christ in that church. Not many in your own church. How does that make you feel? Jealous. Did you say sour? Sour. Wow. Envy. Even bitter. Now hang on, hang on, hang on. You said your vision was for souls to be saved. Well, your vision is being fulfilled, isn't it? You should be jumping up and down and thanking God for this fruit. Yeah? <coughs> so what does that tell you about your vision? Uh-oh. It is not a vision. It is a shadow vision. It's an ambition, isn't it? It's your own ambition. See, you, your ambition is not so much that souls come to Christ. Your ambition is... <laughs> me, 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 me. Wow. We have just exposed human ambition under the guise of divine vision. Wow. Isn't that a great question? Think about that. Challenge yourself on that. When somebody else is seeing what you are saying you really want to see, somebody else is seeing it. Honestly, you've got to be honest here. First task of the leader. Amen. Face the reality. And, and then we can acknowledge that to God. Lord, you know, something's wrong here in my heart. Bring it to God. Yeah. Ask Him to change you here. And, and then we can be healthy leaders. And the healthy leader is like, Wow, you're winning the lost. Boy, how can I help? How can I help you? Not how can I steal your ideas or steal those sheep or <laughs> steal the people. Yeah. Is that cool? Isn't that a great little evaluation metric? <laughs> what else? Dark side, dark side. What else? Intimidation. Can you can you explain how it works, Andy? Instead of uh, focusing on passion to the highest, you actually make it fearful. You you make people fearful and you make them work for you. For wow. All be it. I see. On yep. So so, in, so 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 instead of motivating them through vision, yeah. instead you're trying to manipulate them yeah. through control and fear. Yow. Anyone else before we move on? Close-mindedness. Okay. That this is the vision and that's it. Mm -hmm. The other one is exclusivity. Exclusivity. That means I'm the only one who can do it. Nobody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, good. Great reflections. Um, let me share a little story, a little metaphor with you. Do you know, in the end, who will be the really great leader? I'm going to explain how you can be the really great leader in the end. It only takes one thing. It's so simple to be the really great leader. The really great leader in the end is not necessarily the most gifted at the start, or the best looking, or the smartest, or the strongest. The really great leader in the end is simply the one who keeps getting back up. Here's how it works. You know, you come to Christ, new believer, you start walking with God. Sooner or later, you hit a wall. Don't you? Of some kind. Some sort of problem. And you fall down. Boom. You're down on the ground. You're a new believer. What do you do? You bounce right back up. No problem. Yeah, you know, I, I remember someone told me that uh, the way to the kingdom was through much tribulation. Okay, fair enough. No worries. Wow, boy, I've, I've conquered that. That wasn't so hard. I'm back in the race. I'm charging along. And then I hit, boom, another wall. Isn't this how life goes? Mm -hmm. And I go down. This time I stay a little bit longer down on the floor. Just a little longer. I'm sort of thinking about this now. Oh, wow. This is the second time I've been hit really hard and hit the floor. Is this going to keep happening? No, nah, probably not. That's probably about it. So I get back up. Not quite the bounce that the first one was, but sort of bounce-ish. Get back up, back in the race. All right, this is cool. The worst is behind me. And then suddenly, kaboom. Another wall. Kaboom. Down I go. Yeah? This time I stay down for a while. Ugh. Is it going to really be like this? This is wearing me out. I think about it, you know, quite deeply. And then I think, all right, let's get up again. You know, hopefully that's it. No more. <laughs> slowly get back up, slowly re-engage in the battle. All right, having a breath, going well, and then, you know what happens? Kaboom. Down. This time you stay down for a while. You're really thinking this through. You know, my goodness, I didn't realize it was going to be this hard. I thought all the bad stuff was behind me. It just continues to keep happening and happening, yeah? At this point, some decide, you know, I'm in Christ. I've got eternal life. I'm just going to play it safe from here. I don't know that I can keep hitting these walls, you know, because of pushing aggressively forward. And so they just decide to stay down. Others get back up and they go, one, maybe two more, and then they decide to stay down. This happens to leaders. There is a point at which many leaders, it's different for everybody, but there's a point at which many leaders decide, that's it, I'm staying down. <coughs> to be the really great leader in the end, all you have to do is keep getting back up. That sounds easy, doesn't it? It's really hard <laughs> when you've been hit and hit and hit and hit and down and down and down to keep getting back up. But that, so remember that. Remember this image. The next time you hit, maybe you're hit now. Maybe you're, you know, kind of in that place of, Lord, where am I at? Get back up. Get back up in the race. Get back up in the battle. Just get back up and you, in the end, will be a truly great leader. Amen. Even if you are not necessarily the most gifted, the most talented, the most brilliant, you know, the best looking, any of that stuff. Many of those are long gone, dear friends. Just keep getting back up and in the end, you will be a great leader. Amen. That is passion for the highest. 
Is that cool? Yeah, remember that image. It, it's a beautiful one. It's one I remember on a regular basis. <laughs> Just keep getting back up. Stay in the fight. Doesn't mean you've always got to be running. Sometimes we're just not able to run, can we? We've just been hit and, you know, the left leg is broken and the right arm has been torn and, you know, and you're sort of uh, struggling along and, you know, but if you can't run, then walk. Well, but both of my legs will be broken. All right, you can't walk, so crawl. Well, my kneecaps have been hit. Well, so drag yourself along by your fingertips. Amen. Amen. But don't give up. You don't have to be moving fast. Yeah? You don't have to be moving in some beautiful, you know, glamorous way. You're not trying to win a dancing competition here. Just keep moving. Keep getting back up as best as you can. And God knows. God knows our legs are broken. It's all right. He's not, you know, he's not expecting you to do something that he knows you can't. Just keep moving. Just stay in the battle. Don't give up. Stay in the battle. Stay in the race. And, in, and on the last day, you will be one of those truly great leaders standing before the throne of God. And around His throne, there will be a multitude of people who are there because of your life, because you never gave up, because you kept moving forward. Amen. Let's stand together, please. Let's raise our voices to God. Father, give us a passion for the highest. Let this burn brightly in our hearts and our lives that we will never give up. That you will always be with us. You have promised you will never leave us nor forsake us. You're here with us. And Lord, as we look back in the past, we recognize how you, you were always with us. Even though at the time it seemed like it was sunk. It seemed like everything was all over. But it wasn't. You raised us up again. We have seen this in the past. And Lord, we know you will do this now and in the days ahead. We know you will never give up on us. And so, Lord, by your grace, let us never give up on you. Let us never give up through fear or discouragement or weariness. But let us stay in the battle. Let us stay in the battle. And let us stand before your throne on the last day with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege that you have given us of walking with the infinite and absolutely victorious King of the heavens. You're the one we serve. You have the victory. You have given us the victory. And so whatever happens between now and the last day, we will not back down. And so we say, Father, give us this mountain. You have called us to build leaders across the nations. You have called us to build leaders, healthy leaders across the nations who will build healthy churches, who will plant powerful churches, who will see the huge harvest of souls come among the unreached. And so, Lord, give us this mountain. Raise us up to be strong, to be bold, with a great passion for your very highest. Let us never back down. Let us never give up. And Lord, let us encourage one another. Let us speak life to one another, that we will stand as one unified family, pushing forward with boldness and courage into the mighty future that you have laid out before us. Whether it's painful, whether it's enjoyable, whatever it is, Lord, we embrace your vision for our future. And so, Lord Jesus, give us this mountain. Can we say that to the Lord as one unified family? Lord, give us this mountain. Give us this mountain. Lord Jesus, give us this mountain. 
We will not give up. We will keep standing up again and again and again. And we will see your glorious purposes fulfilled across this planet. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of walking with you. And Lord Jesus, we see you upon the cross. You endured the shame for the joy that was set before you. You did not give up. Even though you knew what was coming in, in, the, in the humiliation and the pain, the torment of the cross and the rejection of the cross, but yet you did not give up. You did not back off. And we will walk in your path, Lord. We will do it, Lord, whatever the price, whatever the cost. Take us, Lord, from glory to glory. And we don't say that lightly, Lord Jesus. We know the reality of this because we've been walking with you for a long time. And we say, Lord, here we are. We're not going to back off. We're not going to give up. Have your way in us. Have your glorious way through us. We commit ourselves to your highest purpose. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.